you're also concerned about a gluttonous society, Gerald. You say we drive big SUVs, we've got big McMansions, big credit card and mortgage debts, big federal and local state deficits. Something has to give. As you mentioned, it's not only that, it's, it's the people themselves. The country's become obese. It's become too fat for its own good. And I know that's politically incorrect, but it's not. You can't keep eating garbage and being unhealthy and expect to function at a high level. So I, people ask me, you know, what should we do? Well, the first thing is you have to get in shape, spiritually, emotionally, and physically. You can't do it without it. It's not going to happen. And, and so we have to, and that goes back to the other trends. How about buying local? Up here in Kingston, New York, we have a farmer's market every Saturday. We're in the Hudson Valley. The place is packed, music playing, great food, the highest of quality, and people having a wonderful time. And then you compare that by going into a Walmart, which is nothing more than a huge self-storage unit with counters in it. And a sterile environment. Yeah. So this is what brings the country back. Go back to the Great Depression. Look at the pictures of the people. I have a photo of my parents' wedding, may their souls rest in peace, 1934. Italian immigrants got married at the height of the, re- the Depression. You should see how these people look, how dignified, how, what shape they're in, how respectful and respectful of themselves they are how dignified, and that's what need this country has to go back to, rather than the, the gross gangster look of stupidity that's become the pop culture in this country. Why, would you ever imagine Dwight D. Eisenhower on, on the view? You know, we're talking about gluttonous behavior, and I think millions have been sort of lulled into complacency due to this corn syrup that's injected into practically every product that we purchase today. Do you think that the manufacturers require some blame? Yeah, I was awarded an honorary doctorate from National University of Health Sciences for the work I've done over the years in complementary medicine. I wouldn't take this stuff. You have high cholesterol? Yes, change your diet. Now try that one. That'll be radical. And, and you mentioned about the, the fructose. Now there's a this story just came out on Reuters about cancer cells slurp up fructose. Oh yeah, what a surprise. There's a way out of this, Chris. But again, people have to get healthy spiritually, emotionally, and physically. Only the strong, only the strong are going to survive the greatest coming depression. Very good. Let's talk about your neo-survivalism. You know, Americans are survivors. We're facing a worst-case scenario, I think, on many fronts here. The economy, unemployment, inflation, foreclosures, massive debt. Why don't you tell listeners a few simple methods, techniques that you've honed over the years to become a Salente neo-survivalist? Well, number one, I I watch what I eat. It's, It's hard for everybody. It's not easy not to eat junk. But, you know, I'm Italian, so I eat high-quality food, number one. I buy local, and I buy as much organic as I can. Number two, every day I try to meditate and, and quiet my mind. I want to be in, 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 in balance physically, emotionally, as I said, and spiritually. Number three, you know, I learn how to protect myself. I'm a close combat practitioner and have been for over a quarter of a century. And people should understand that as well. I'm a believer in the Second Amendment rights. And as people, you've heard me say this over and over again, and I'll keep repeating it over again. When people lose everything and they have nothing left to lose, they lose it. And people are going to start losing it. You're going to see more and more violent crime. So people should start thinking in those terms. But number four, it's the perfect grasshopper and ant scenario right now. We're in the midst of the summer. The winter's coming. Are you prepared? Start putting up preserves for the winter. Start really feeding your family fine foods. Rip up those useless lawns that are growing grass that you can't eat. It's just useless stuff. So start producing out of that. Really become self-sufficient. Don't spend a dime you don't have to. And also, when you do spend a dime, spend it on quality. And also, very important, get together with people of like mind whether it's in a church, a book group, whatever it might be, because if the worst happens, you want to have a support group. And I have a number of support groups. And also, if you live in an area that's prone to, say, terrorism, because we believe there's going to be another 9-11 magnitude strike, considering the United States foreign policy escapades, are you prepared to get away from there? Do you have a support group and know the way out? What if you're in New York City and there's another 9-11? You think you're going to be able to get out of there? 
Do you have an escape plan? What if they hit a nuclear power plant? Look what's going on in Russia now with the fear of the wildfires, the, the, hottest, the hottest on record August they, that's burning up the country. What happens if a nuclear power plant goes up? Are you going to be able to escape? Those are things to consider. If you prepare for the worst and the worst doesn't happen, you have nothing to lose. What if they do have a terrorist strike and they close the banks? Are you going to have money? Or will they devalue the money again as they did the last time they called a bank holiday? Remember, they closed Wall Street after 9-11. We believe this time they're going to close the banks after a terror strike and they'll devalue your currency. So do you have enough on hand, whether it's a precious metal or cash, to turn into one? Because we believe that the next time they close the banks, they'll do exactly like they did the first time they closed the banks, and that's devalue the dollar. You also discuss a major terror strike. We haven't had a significant terror attack uh, since 2001. Is the system really working that well? If anybody thinks the system is working that well, look at who the past and present head of Homeland Security. What is it, Janet Napolitano? She's going to save you? Look at all the breakdowns in the system. This is what people really need to realize, Chris that the government is ineffective at every level. They're losers. They're losing the war in Afghanistan. I don't want to hear how they're going to keep, they're making progress. It's nine years going, and between that and the Iraq losing war, we're spending trillions of dollars. They have BP and Katrina quality rescue skills. Look at the education system. We don't even win, place, or show. No, no one is in control. You, got, you have a bunch of bureaucrats that have never worked a day in their lives, that are political wannabes, that never get their fingers dirty. These people are not going to save you. When the Greatest Depression hits, only the strong are going to survive, and the weakest and the most helpless are going to be the ones you better watch out for, because they're going to want to have what you have, and not work or pay for it. 